What's up everyone, Darkrest17 here doing today's Bleach chapter 565 review titled God Like You. Very interesting chapter actually, it was very good actually, I was not expected to be this good. It was basically, we received the information this week how basically Yuhabak, or I should say Yuwak, or whatever his name is, whatever the name in the chapter reveal him is, uh, his weakness and how he gives and gets his strength. Basically, I'm not going to go over the summary. Basically, this guy has a special kind of soul. And um, this type of soul, if he bestows it to others or people like use his soul, it repairs something in their life. Broken limbs, broken eyesight, broken voice, whatever. Despite him himself being actually mute, deaf, and all these things. But after this, when he receives, when the person dies, he receives this power and more back. I'm guessing and more. This is a little bit unclear to me, but I'm guessing he either receives this and more. In other words, he receives the whole person's strength back. Or he either just gets it back and that's what makes him become um, stronger. In other words, lose his uh, blindness, his muteness, and so on and so forth. So basically, you have back the whole point of the Stern Ritters. This basically, this, this is what the chapter showed us. The whole point of the Stern Raiders is he gave them each a portion of his power, okay, like the S, the I, then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. And, and so, and he waited for each one of them to die so he can maintain living. In other words, we find out that in this chapter, this guy loves war for that particular reason because he wants to live. Without war, he doesn't live. Without death, without suffering, without that kind of, well, not suffering necessarily, but without people dying at his cause, his own people dying, um, then he won't be able to survive. But we also find out something very interesting in this chapter. He he mentions that the Serete, or no, Jugram, I believe, mentions that the Serete actually have some of his Reishi in him in them. And I don't know how that's going to work. Like, how, how did that work? How did he manage to get that in them? Maybe when, when he stole their Bankai and they stole it back kind of thing? Maybe, I, I have a feeling it's something like that when he, he figured they were going to steal their Bankai back. So, anyway. He didn't mention anyone else. He didn't mention any particular Shinigami. He just mentioned, like, the Serete. The Serete 13 were influ got his soul bestowed upon them or given to them. So I thought that was very interesting. And then we cut to have a little conversation between Uryu and Ish and uh, Yugram. And basically, um, Yugram is, like, telling him about, uh, like telling him all this. And he said, and... And what's his name? Uh, Uriel is all like, um, yeah, but he's like, you can see he's kind of regretting what he wanted to do. And I was like, yeah, well, duh, you're kind of stupid. And he, like, we don't even know how. He just popped up on that guy's side, like, one day. Like, one day he just popped up on the bad guy's side. And it just, it made no sense. You know what I mean? Like, we, like you know what I mean? It's just weird. Like, to me, the fact that Uriel sw switched to, um, I mean, it makes sense, the Quincy side, but it was just like, like instantly. It wasn't even like, wait, let's wait a minute. No, it was just like, he automatically switched. But anyway, whatever, I guess that doesn't make any difference. So anyway, y Yugram is telling him about how Uryu, despite his regrets, it's too late. Uryu is now a part of his majesty, which means he's part of Yugram because he, he, he went through, he went through with the, um, inheritance ceremony or something like that in other words he drank his blood and that event made him basically receive a portion of yuha yuha's soul i'm just gonna call him yuha back i know his name is like y h w u wak or whatever but i'm just gonna call him you 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 back for now because that's just what i feel like doing too bad anyways um so who are you we find out that Uriel is now officially a stern writer, and if he dies, um, he is gonna make Yuha back all that much stronger. It was a pretty simple chapter, like I mentioned, and nothing really happened other than we saw a picture of Yuha back when he was younger, and he looked exactly like fucking what's his name? Um, oh my god, I'm having a blank. What was his name again? Uh, Espada number number four, green guy. How can I forget this guy's name? Oh my god! Hold on, I know this is gonna piss me off. 
Spada number four. Bleach. The hell's his name? Ulukiora. Oh my god, how did I forget this guy's name? Anyway, he kind of looks like Ulukiora, but as a kid, and I just find that I found that kind of funny. But anyway, whatever. It was a pretty good chapter overall. Mm, it, it, and like what I mentioned before, like about how this can be his weakness. Well, if everyone, I know it's not, it's not exactly going to be entirely possible, but if anyone prevents death and war, that would be the best way to beat Yuhabak. Because if he needs death and war, in other words, to survive, to live, he, if this is abolished and stopped, they'll be able to beat um, Yuhabak. But if not, because I have a feeling the more people die, the stronger he's going to become. That's kind of like what's hinted in this chapter, in, in a sense. But by, by strength, like, what, what are the limits of this strength? Is he going to become super strong? He's going to become invincible, like, really invincible. Like, you know what I mean? It, I feel like this guy is weaker than um, Aizen, though. Like, I don't know why. This chapter kind of showed me that he was, kind of told me that he was weaker than Aizen. Like, I don't know. You, you guys see, like, Aizen achieved immortality or perfection or whatever you want to call it. And this guy is, like, just, like, struggling to stay alive by making his own subordinates die. Like, at the same time, it was kind of a weird chapter, now that I think about it. Anyway, so the chapter ends where he's like, thank you for all those that have died. My body and my senses are still intact. Which is, I guess, it's pretty good. But anyways, like I said, eh. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, it was pretty good overall. I guess I'm going to give it a 7 because it was interesting that we finally found out how his abilities work. I like that. But at the same time, I feel like he's not the strongest villain in this whole series. It just kind of hints to me more about how Aizen should have been the last arc and just should have ended there and that's it. But I guess not. Anyway, whatever. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And uh, have yourselves a great rest of the week. And I'll see you guys next week. Is there, there's no Attack on Titan chapter. Like, uh, I've been, it's like a few weeks now I'm waiting. It was supposed to come out last week. It's the 23rd, 22nd. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, I've been waiting. Uh, anyway. I don't know what's going on with that. If that guy's on break or whatever. But, porca miseria. Anyway, so if any of you guys know anything about that, let me know. Have yourselves a great rest of the week, and I'll see you guys next week. Tell me what you guys thought about the chapter. Like the video if you please. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Ciao.